A lot of people have been following my videos for a while. I've noted something. Um, I kind of carry myself as a nice guy on YouTube, but if you actually look at what I have to say and the way that I tend to make my points, you'll you soon see that I'm not quite as nice as you know you would think that my attempts to portray myself uh, would reflect. Uh, <laughs> And it's not because I'm deliberately being polite or considerate of other people's feelings. I suppose there might be an element of that. I'm a Canadian, after all, and we're supposedly obsessed with that. Um, the main thing is I just don't want to get sidetracked into stupid personality quarrels. Um, it's not that I think that you should avoid controversial subjects. It's just that I don't want to get caught in, you know, a urinating match. <laughs> <clears throat> Some people seem to like that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Good scrap. Uh, but to me, the meat and potatoes, in spite of what some people might think, is a lot more important to me than winning the argument. Um, take that as you will. <laughs> as, uh, as uh, you know, guardedly and cynically as you'd like. Um... But I've noticed something. Even though I do tend to approach people that I disagree with in a nice way, they often know that I'm trying to sort of, I wouldn't say bait them, but I'm trying to provoke them into a discussion uh, to come at what may be their most dearly held ideas. People don't like this. <laughs> um, I'm the kind of guy, true to, I guess, my Irish heritage, where, you know, I walk into the bar and I immediately pick a fight with the biggest guy in the room. <laughs> I might not win. In fact, most of the time, I probably don't win in as, in as much as one can have a victory in an in a intellectual sparring match. Um, but I always enjoy the fight. <laughs> um, but one of the interesting things is the people that tend to get the most provoked by me, and by most provoked... Um, to get the, the, the highest level of frustration, i.e. the people who are most likely to block me, to say, get out of my face, I've had enough of you, tend to be people that I would call, of the, uh, that I would, you know, pigeonhole, perhaps unfairly, as the anarcho-capitalist, anarchist, libertarian, objectivist type set. Um... They tend to get the most frustrated, and they tend to get the most angry and the most decisive in their anger. In other words, block, don't want to talk to you ever again, get out of my face. <clears throat> um, people who are really sort of emotional on YouTube, who make a, almost a, a point of showing their raw emotions, their raw humanity, in Mendham, <laughs> haven't blocked me yet. Um, so I get the impression that he's probably less offended by what I have to say than somebody who never raises his voice, uh, who likes to think of himself as very logical and rational and, uh, um, you know, essentially carries himself the same way I do, perhaps even more sort of wooden than I get. Uh, those people are the ones who are going to block me. <laughs> those are the ones who are going to get so frustrated that they just have to sort of erase me from their YouTube experience. Which is okay. I'm not saying that people have the obligation to tolerate my provocations. But I just noticed that, what, that, that I find that so fascinating. The fact that the people who are the most likely to get so frustrated with me that they can't even deal with it anymore, deal with my my shenanigans, uh, are people who pride themselves or seem to portray themselves, I guess, um, as being rational, logical, methodical in their thinking. Um, you know, the objectivist type, the, and no, no, Mr. Quad, I'm not talking about you. I'm referring to other people. Um, you tend to wear your emotions on your sleeve as much as anybody else, and that's good. I like that. Um, but what I'm saying is, um, other people out there, and I think we know who I'm referring to, who, will, who are likely to block you, are people who just are not prepared for arguments that, how shall I put it, appeal to the irrational? Appeal to 
human nature or or not even so much appeal to human nature but refer to that part of our nature that cannot be logically and rationally described or even approached um Nietzsche, of course, will come into this. Uh, very analytical, very rational, very logical mind, but uh, absolutely insistent upon the necessity of, I won't say pandering to, but nourishing or um, allowing for that part of us which is not irrational, or that, that is not rational. The Apollonian versus the Dionysian. That's the way he would have put it. Now, I love the way that, by the way, Nietzsche comes at this simply because I am a classicist. I'm into ancient Greece and Rome in particular. I love their ethics. Um, I wouldn't want to live under their ethical system, but I love them because they're so different from ours. They look similar enough for us to come to grips with them, but they actually are very different. The, especially the ancient Greeks, I find. The Romans are a little bit more like us, but the Greeks, uh, one ancient uh, historian said or a historian, modern historian of ancient history said the more you study the Greeks the weirder they look and I think that that's true they celebrated the Dionysian as much as they did the Apollonian now I don't necessarily look at it as a dual nature the way some people might, I would sort of say we have a multifaceted nature and I might even say we have a infinitely faceted nature <clears throat> If you try to reduce us to a set of logical formula, you're going to kill us uh, as humans. Uh, you know, as you know, you get things like Benatari in logic, where you sort of think, okay, that it may, you know, he makes a fairly good case, although there, it's massively flawed. But if you accept the parameters that he places around the case, uh, around his case, you sort of say, okay, I guess he's got a point. Um, I don't, I, I don't think that. Like, that's a big if, if you do actually accept his axioms, if you accept his, his the parameters that he places around it, which I don't, by the way, but I think that's obvious. But the parameters, that's the fascinating thing. If you accept the brackets that you've placed around the debate that you're willing to have or the, the points of view that you're going to put forward, those brackets are blocking out other aspects of reality. Um, I've often said that ceteris paribus, logic makes sense, but in the real world, or in the wor in a holistic worldview, ceteris is never paribus. <laughs> so, you know, in the ivory tower, which is fine, if you want to stay in the ivory tower, that's okay. Um, but real life has a habit of asserting itself in ways that you might not find very comfortable and not, might not be very um, prepared for when they come at you. So when I, when I come at a somewhat geeky, um, intellectual type, um, I don't know, Randian or anarcho-capitalist or something like that, uh, with my trumpeting of human irrationality and human imperfections and human uh, refusal or I would say even dogged inability to fit into a set of parameters, there's no you're not prepared for that. The, the said um, intellectual, um, rational, reasonable, um, enlightenment, worshipping, sort of uh, libertarian type person simply can't, in the very nature of the way they've constructed their own way of thinking, deal with the irrational, the non- logical part of us, which is there. So they're more likely to hit the block button. There's nothing else I can do with you. You're blocked. Now, a lot of people might take that sort of as, I don't know, a repudiation or a sign of weakness or something like this. I don't, I don't see it that way. It kind of fascinates me. Because when you've got a very carefully worked out system, like many of them do, and, and, and I'm kind of just picking on that one particular group. I'm not actually... They're not the only ones who are <laughs> guilty of this uh, by any stretch. But I'm sort of referring to them as what I find is the, 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 the sorest thumb of them all. Um, who you know People who tend to sort of think rational, rational, logical, logical, and the hammer comes down hard if anything irrational or illogical comes along. 
Um, why do we need these parameters? Why do we have to exclude that which does not fit into our ism, our, our methodology? Um, the Western habit of putting everything into categories and categories that which we then forget having created, we then treat them as absolutes, creates that situation where you just, you can't, you've set up your reality in a certain way and the garden that you've cultivated must not have weeds and if weeds come along they simply have to be ruthlessly uprooted. Um, and yet, as Galileo said, and yet it moves. We can say that we don't have this irrational nature, that we don't have the Dionysian, I guess you would call it, or we don't have this um, human, all too human part of our makeup. We can say this, but it will assert itself, especially when the logical and rational starts to look vulnerable to base humanity. <laughs> um, to the fact that we are what we are and we don't operate according to any formula we have yet to work out as a species. We seem to defy all the categories that we have created to analyze and regulate ourselves. Uh, which is why I suppose any kind of philosophical discussion, if you ask me, that doesn't take into consideration, or any, any sort of philosophical position, I guess, that doesn't take into consideration the fact that humans are a mass of contradic contradictions and we are exceptions to our own rules, is bound to create a situation in which you've got to reach for that block button, one way or another. It's kind of like the utilitarianism and totalitarianism that I was referring to earlier. Um, is there a way out of this trap? I'm not sure. I really am not. Um, because the problem is, of course, we have to manage our affairs with each other. We have to somehow reconcile the fact that we are contradictory and maddeningly inconsistent. We are incredibly inconsistent, and yet all of our systems seem to be dependent upon consistency, which simply is not to be found in human nature. Or if it is to be found in human nature, inconsistency is also to be found in human nature. That's why I suppose I always like to say uh, when people ask me, what is your position? My position is to keep my options open. My position is to... Um, how would I, conditionally accept many things as facts, but to never forget that I have accepted those things conditionally. I conditionally accept the axioms that most philosophers put forward conditionally um, I conditionally accept existence exists for example I conditionally accept that um, identity exists etc however the western again the western way of, of coming at these things is that we don't we, when perhaps at the beginning we conditionally accept these things but then we proceed as though these are absolutes Having done that, you have immediately made yourself vulnerable. You have made your position vulnerable to a flanking maneuver from raw human nature, which doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. Will humans ever operate according to a formula? I don't think so. Will we ever be able to operate without a formula? <laughs> I don't think so. Human all too human, we are a little bit crazy, aren't we? But if we are crazy, if it's in our nature to be crazy, does it make any sense for us to try to be not crazy, at least consistently? <laughs> this video actually was kind of fun to make. It's kind of a stream of consciousness like most of mine, but uh, I rather enjoyed this one. <laughs>